Good morning again and welcome to the second video in this uh, Statistics Chapter 2 video. And this video is all about data classification. Again, it's a short video but it's an important building block into the world of statistics. Now, we say we're talking about data all the time here. We say, first of all, that data can be qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative or quantitative. Now, the qualitative, that word comes from qualities. So what are the qualities of people? Kind, mean, blue eyes, brown eyes, blonde, brunette, bald, too sexy for a shirt, whatever it is, they're qualities. Whereas this is quantitative, they're quantities, they're numbers. So in the social sciences we're all often looking at qualities, but as this is maths we're going to be specifically Focusing on quantities, because quantities means numbers. So when you're making notes, maybe give some examples of qualities and quantities that people have. Now, having narrowed it down to numbers, quantitative, we now say that data is either discrete or continuous. Now, discrete data, we describe that as numbers, as numbers you count. Okay? So you can only be a specific number. There's four eggs in the basket, there's six eggs in the basket, there's 10 eggs in the basket. You can't have 3.2 eggs in the basket. Continuous data there is data that we measure. And depending on how accurately we measure, you can have a certain amount. So you can have 400 grams of eggs in the basket, 322 grams of eggs in the basket, 429 grams of eggs in the basket. If we're measuring it grams, it's continuous, or centimetres, or metres, or kilograms. Remember, we're using those SI units that we've had before. See how that links back and comes up again here? Whereas if you count it, and it's discrete data, we can do different things with discrete or continuous data. Measure, count. Clear on the difference between those. It's a little bit important later. Now, the next thing when we're talking about data is we need to talk about the difference between a population and a sample. Note, it really depends on how you define things. Now remember, we're talking here about going on to uh, internal assessment later on. So if we wanted to study uh, the grade 11s at Carlsbad International School, we could have a population, because we could count or we could measure the height of all the grade 11s in Carlsbad International School. But if we were looking at a, a, a project that looked at the height of 17-year-olds uh, in Carlsbad Bari, which is where our school is for those who it's impossible for us to measure the height of all the 17-year-olds in, in Carlsbad Bari. That would be the whole population. So we'd have to take a sample. And we could take a sample all out of Carlsbad International School. A sample of 17-year-olds. So you see how a sample is a small amount of an entire population. And it really depends on how you define your project. And that depends on what you want to study. And that's going to come in later. Remember I talked about the different subjects you might be using this in. If you're able to measure everybody, you've got a population. That's really, really rare though, unless you have a small focus project. So you're more often than not wanting to look at a sample. Now, when you pick your sample, you've got to consider whether you've got a random sample or a biased sample. And I've put some scales here because that's a really important evaluative point. Do you have a random sample or do you have a biased sample? Thinking about, again about our 17 year olds in Carlyle Valley, if we take a sample from CIS students, is it a random sample of all the 17 year olds in Carlyle Valley? Is it a biased sample? Well, I'd say it's probably biased because the people, the students at this school are maybe richer or maybe from like, different countries. They're not really representative. That's a key word, representative. Your sample, your small group must represent, be representative, represent the 
group um, that you or the population that you're hoping to study. So how you choose your sample is a very important stage on how you do a project as you're working towards your internal assessment. If you can randomise this sampling, you know, maybe pick names out of the hat or pick every tenth name or whatever it is, then it really helps you to show that you've tried to get a random representative sample. That's the end of this video. It's quite a short one, but it's a really important building block in this.